Good morning. Today is Thursday. Um, I got here a little early. It's about 7.30 right now, I would say. Um, no, it's like 7.15. I don't know. But we put together a little bit of our calendar. So there it is. There's a little bit of things in there. Not a lot, but there is some stuff in there because we're still trying to figure out what we're doing this whole quarter, like what events we're having. Um, we have, what is it? Um, Red Ribbon Week. We don't even know when that is. We don't have a calendar. No one gave us a calendar. And I'm trying to look things up on the internet and it's like, okay, well, what else is there? I'm like, I don't know. I can't think of things. You have to tell me what we got to do. So if no one told me about Red Ribbon Week, I'd have no idea. Um, when is Spirit Week? <laughs> is it like whatever week I pick or does it go with some kind of thing on calendar? I don't know. So we have to figure that out. But we got another thing from our Donors Choose thing. Our don Donors Choose wish list. So we have our rug. We have our, our prize wheel there. We have to put it together on here. And then this is our raffle ticket drum. So basically you like turn this handle and spins all the tickets, mixes them up. And you can just like open it and close it if I can. It's kind of hard to open, but that could be a good thing. Um, then you put it in here. So insert the slot and it's locked and then pick the prize, pick the winner here. So let me close this. So anyways, um, I put up these, so I have to put um, the period numbers because I added them all here, so it's just going to be like a little tiny block, I guess, around here. Um, yeah, so today I have to make more paper chains, which is every single day because I keep forgetting to have my kids do it. And we're going to put up more. I'm definitely going to need more paper, though, so I'm going to have to go back to Michael's and get some more. I'm just, like, hoping they still have the colors that I need because <laughs> I bought them, like, three years ago. Maybe two. No, I bought them three years ago. So I'm hoping they still make the colors that I need. Like, it's a pack of all the colors except purple. So if they don't have it, I'm kind of screwed. But <laughs> we'll have to see about that. Um, anyways, um, what else? I don't know what else. <sighs> Thursday it's already Thursday it is week three Thursday and it feels like it's week one Thursday like we're already a month into almost a month into school and our quarters are only nine weeks long so our quarter is like almost halfway done like that's crazy feels like we just started but yeah anyways um I can't remember if I told you but that kid who was causing problems in my sixth period um he's special ed so he has like a 30 day probationary time that he's here. If it doesn't fit, we find a new placement for him. And he, we had a meeting and he was crying. So he was, he was really like interested in like trying to do better, which is what we want to hear. Um, usually if kids are crying in meetings, that's a good thing for us because it's like they're understanding what they're doing wrong and what they can, what can happen to them. So we had the meeting, he's crying, and he's like, yeah, I, I really want to do better. Um, I know that this school is an opportunity. So our school, although it's continuation school, um, kids have the opportunity to graduate earlier. So we've had kids who graduated at 16 years old. Um, one of my students from last quarter actually graduated when she was 16, and she was, she was such a great kid. But um, yeah, kids have the option to graduate early here. Um, but if you're special ed, you're only, you're only here for 30-day probation and we decide whether we want to keep you or not and if you cause too many problems for our SPED teachers our academic support then we don't have enough um, what's the word I guess we don't have enough support as other schools so we can decide you know what this isn't a better fit he needs more support at whatever school and they have that available so we don't have as many resources there's a word resources we don't have as many resources as other schools we are a very small school we serve about 350 students only um because we are a continuation school it needs to be a lower number and the class sizes need to be lower but granted we still have 30 35 kids in our classes but it is what it is um so he's crying in the meeting he said he's going to do better and next day he comes into class he wants to kind of argue with me um, I spent all my summer making my curriculum and he couldn't handle it because most of, like a lot of it is group work we're like working tables and he can't sit with other kids because he distracts the entire class so I told him you're gonna sit in the back 
and we're going to put you on a separate curriculum because when you're absent or when you need to go down to the um, academic support class, I cannot like give you things to make up because it's in class notes and it's in class practice drills. So you can't really make those up in another class. You have to be here to do it. So I told him I'm going to put you on a different curriculum. So I gave him the old textbook. We adopted a new one, but I gave him an old one. Um, he said, he just wanted to argue, so he kept saying like, oh, I've already done this, I already know this, I already know the story, why do I have to do this, why can't I do that, I don't want to do this, blah, 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 and he kept saying like, I've already done this, I already know this story, I've already done these questions, so I said, okay, that's awesome, that means you're going to do so well at it, and then he had, he had to say, and this was kind of like irked me, why can't you just make a specific curriculum just for me, and I was like, do you know how long it takes to make a curriculum and schools spend so much money like thousands and thousands of dollars on curriculum so I said you're gonna sit in the back over here you can sit by yourself and when a kid argues with you do not argue back do not argue back because it's just gonna escalate I didn't argue with him but I told him there's no way I'm gonna do that I'm not going to spend that time I don't have that time sorry you you lost your chance this is what you get you can take it or you can leave it if you leave it you fail the class if you take it maybe you could pass that's all that's what I left it at um, but he kept wanting to argue and you just got to cut that off. You got to cut it off because if you don't, he's just going to keep going and it's going to escalate and you don't want that. Um, do not argue with students, okay? If you argue with students, you get, you're giving them power. Um, anyways, um, he decided to sit there and do nothing and that's fine. Like sit there and do nothing. But no, like you're on the verge of being kicked out of our school. <laughs> like you have 30 days to prove to us that you deserve to be here and you're not showing it to us. So um, he went to the bathroom, didn't come back for like 20 minutes. So if they're gone for 20 minutes, I have to mark them absent. So I marked him absent, um, came back to class, sat there, did nothing. And then I went over to our older books. We have some other white books that we used to use last quarter, but um, I decided to give him one of those since he wanted to complain so much about the other book. I'm like, fine, I'll give you another book then. So I brought that over to our resource um, academic support teacher. She said that's awesome because it's like a workbook that you can like rip out the pages, but it's also a textbook, I guess, a textbook where you can rip out the pages and work on it. Um, and she was like, awesome, that's so much easier for her too because the practice drills and everything. So I talked to her, I sent one over to her classroom and he didn't show up the next day which I was like what what do you mean he's not showing up that's like crazy like he's supposed to <laughs> like that he agreed and he didn't show up so turns out that he was um, cussing at one of the teachers um, in another room and walked out and from there it's like that that was the line so they were they're recommending they're recommending him to another school um, particularly back to his home school so the school that he came from um, because they do have more resources, which kind of confuses me as to why we would take him then if they had more resources. It doesn't make sense, but um, anyways, he's going back to his home school. He's going to have to figure out another way to make up the credits because um, that's a regular comprehensive school. So it takes an entire year to finish a class over there, whereas it takes one semester to finish a class here. So he's just going to either graduate late or be in like online classes after school, night school too, so he's gonna have to figure that out on his own. Um, that's a cool thing about being at a smaller school is we don't have a lot of resources, so when we have kids like that who just keep causing problems, um, we can send them out, but only if they're special ed. If they're not special ed, we do keep them, and there's quite a lot of those kids too. Um, and he wasn't like, definitely wasn't one of the worst kids I've ever dealt with, not at all. Like I've dealt with so much worse than kids like disrupting class. But because he's a SPED student, he is up for a uh, new placement. So the whole point of us, the, I guess the whole reason that we would move them, we would place them somewhere else is to help them. Because if they aren't getting what they need here, we want to help them. You know, we don't just want to kick kids out. That's not the point. We don't want to just kick kids out. Um, what we want to do is find a better placement for them. And if they're like cussing at our teachers here just causing so many problems and you're a sped student how can we help you so um the sped teachers are the ones who like brought up the case because they were helping him with his work and they were standing over him like as he was working kind of looking at how he was doing 
And he made a comment that made one of the women feel very uncomfortable, saying that, like, you're in my space. I feel so uncomfortable with you right now. You need to back up. Like, I don't want you touching me or something like that. Like, accusing her of touching him, which she didn't. And there were already two teachers in the class, so um, thank goodness there were. But, like, when, when you're a woman, when you're a female teacher, and you're alone in a classroom with a student, they always tell you to keep your door open. But in the end, that's not enough. It's not enough because it's you against them. Like, it's my words against someone else's words. It's her words against his words. And it's like, that's not enough. <laughs> it's really not enough. Um, and that teacher has kids, so if they, if the kid wanted to keep going and saying, no, she touched me or she did this or that, it, her kids can be taken away from her and it could just be this big, huge ordeal. And it just made her really com uncomfortable, so she reported it. And we feel like that's the kid that would push it more. He would um, take advantage of these opportunities to like, further himself. So yeah, that, that's what kind of started this whole thing. And I was already dealing with him in my class like personally, like I was handling it, but since she brought that up and she wanted to know my experience, like, yeah, this is what happened. I documented everything. Make sure you document everything. Just put it in um, a notebook or put it on a Google Doc or something. Just document everything. This is the date he, he did this. He wouldn't give me his phone this day. He, whatever. Um, but yeah, he, every single teacher has had problems with him. So it's just not a good fit for him. The school doesn't work for him. So we are, we are putting him back at his home school where they do have access to that extra support to help him out and get him back on track because that's what he needs. Um, anyways, that's the story. So I don't know if he's going to come back today or if he's just staying home until he is replaced. Um, we'll have to see, but I don't think he's going to come to my class. He didn't come yesterday because he was in those meetings and they decided they're going to move him so his parents picked him up. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I. As, as a female teacher, I want to just stress it to all the other female teachers. Although they tell you to keep a door open in your classroom, if you are alone with another student, it's not enough. And it's not. Like, if there's a kid who wants to stay after school, you need to go to another teacher's room where there's a teacher in there. Don't let them stay in your room with just you. Um, just take the kid to another teacher's room and both of you just be in there because it's, leaving a door open means nothing. Like, I'm in the corner of the school. Like, if my door's open, no one's even over here. Like, no one's, I'm in, like, my own hallway. Like, no one's here. Um, my, mine's the only classroom in this whole hallway, so. Um, I've also been told, like, if a student wants to stay, call another teacher and tell them, oh, I have a student in my classroom, and they want to stay, so it's going to be us two. So, even then, it's like, that doesn't do anything, you know? Like, it doesn't mean anything. So, if a student wants to stay after school, same sex or different sex, you take that student to another room where there is another teacher on campus and stay with the teacher so there's two teachers in there. Um, if there's no other teachers on campus or that are willing to stay, tell them another time. We can't stay today. You have to stay another time. Um, just don't put yourself in that type of position. So anyways, that's my little rant for this morning. And it's like 7.30, 7.40 in the morning. and. Anyways, <laughs> that's just wanted to get that out there. But anyways, I am going to set up for the day. I haven't set up for the day yet. I like just got into my classroom. And yeah. Oh, also I'm like doing daily vlogs. So I have to like um, make the um, thumbnails in my classroom and add all like the tags and everything in my classroom because I run out of time in the morning. I'm so tired at night. Like I go home, I edit the video. I upload it to YouTube. I don't post it yet. Like, it's unlisted, so you can't see it. And then in the morning, I'm like, oh, I'll just make, you know, I'm going to make the thumbnail when I wake up. Nope. I got to go to work. I'm too I'm too late. I woke up too late. And then I get to work, and I'm like, oh, I got a, I got a video, so I have more footage for the vlog. Nope. You have five minutes to make your thumbnail and tags and everything. So I'm going to do that right now before the bell rings. <laughs> Inside your bedroom. 